Is this the perfect camera for vlogging? Sony just released the ZV-E1. I bought this with my own money a week ago. This video is not sponsored, and this is what I think of the camera. Pretty good, it's got a few cons, and so I'm gonna run through my 10 favorite things about it and my five least favorite things about it. All right, let's go. Now, when I say, is this the perfect camera for vlogging, what do I mean? Well, vlogging, I mean like taking like selfie-style videos where you kinda wanna look into the screen and talk to yourself through it, usual solo camera type operations that's what I do here on a travel channel and that's what this camera was made for this was made for creating high quality single camera operator vlogs you're running the camera you want to be able to see yourself you want to be able to see the world and so it has a fully articulating flip out screen turns around all different ways high quality it's a removable lens camera so you can remove the lenses put different lens on it it uses Sony's e-mount um, I've got the f4 16 to 35 power zoom lens you can buy this two thousand five hundred dollars in the u.s with a kit lens on it i don't think that one's wide enough for vlogging so i got the body only two thousand two hundred dollars added my lens a little over a thousand bucks to get what i'm reviewing right here now what i really like about this camera model as a solo operator is they've really tried to make it simple there's not very many buttons there's not very many dials you can run this thing in full auto and it takes really quite good video and audio which we'll get to as part of the review if you want to dial in all the manual settings, you still can. It's got knobs, it's got buttons, but you can see it's really simple and you operate most of it via the touch screen on here where you can get to all those pro settings like ISO and aperture. First thing I really like about this camera, I like the size. I've removed the lens right now so you can see the full size. It is, it's quite small. It's small enough that you can put it in a small bag, in a purse, in a backpack. It fits easily in there. The lens in this case um, is about the same size as the camera. I mean, it's a little fatter, but if you put it in a cubicle shape, about the same size, about the same weight. Camera weighs 480 grams, just about a pound. Lens weighs a little less than a pound. Together, two pounds um, and pretty easily portable and less obnoxious than the Sony a7S III or bigger cameras that look more professional. This one you carry it around and because it's smaller and even if you put a smaller lens on it, people don't think you're a pro as much that they have to be like, hey, do you have a, do you have a permit for doing this shoot? The second thing that's really great about this camera is the stabilization and really one of the primary selling points that I got it for as a travel content creator. I'm gonna switch to this camera so you can see from here, but when you're walking forward without a gimbal, it really just looks like it's floating. And even if you turn it around like this, and now I walk this way away, this is handheld, just walking down the pier, and it really looks like it really looks like I could be using a gimbal. Now there's a few different stabilization modes. I have it in the most stable setting, which does crop in the footage more to give it that stabilized floating look, but uh, that's why you're gonna want a wide angle lens on this camera so you can get all that stabilization. And if this isn't stable enough for you in post-production, in editing, Sony has what they call their catalyst software that you can do even more stabilization to get even more smoother looking footage. The third thing I really like about this camera is I like the built-in microphone. I've got the windscreen on it right now, but I'm going to go ahead and remove that windscreen. This is the uh, microphone capsule that's on it, and it's an intelligent microphone, so it'll detect if you're in the front of the camera, it will switch the audio to the front. If you're behind the camera, it will switch the audio to the back, or you can manually set it to do one or the other, or set it to pick up sound from both sides, but that's pretty good. If you're vlogging and you don't want noise from back here, it's smart enough to do that. It does come with this included um, dead cat, as they call it, that you slide into the microphone, the hot shoe right next to the microphone, and it does a pretty good job of blocking out the wind noises. But the other thing I really like about this camera, and what I like about Sony cameras, is I like the included hot shoe that's on it so you can add external microphones with a digital interface. Now in particular, one of the external microphones that I like is the Sony shotgun microphone. It has this little digital connector here that goes right into this hot shoe. You slide it in there, and now all of a sudden you have an even better microphone directed directly connected to the camera. No wires, no batteries in here. It gets powered from the camera, and so I really like that. Obviously, this takes up a little more room, 
um, than the onboard one, so it makes it a little bit bigger. But if you're looking for good audio, check that out. If you want to know the exact model number, I'll put the link in the description below that you could check out that microphone. This video isn't sponsored, but if you do decide to buy something from one of those links, it does really go to help out the channel. The thing that I really use as a microphone in here more than anything else, though, is the Sony Bluetooth microphone. So this is the uh, ECMW1M, and it has this little Bluetooth receiver that you put in there. And then this is the microphone. And I turn this on and I clip it on my bag. And then I've got the receiver on the camera powered by the camera. This doesn't need its own power. It just turns on when the camera turns on. This takes a little triple A battery. It'll last all day running this. Um, and so most of the vlogs that you see me record where I'm using a Sony camera, I'm using this microphone. I'm using the DJI mic to record this on the Samsung Galaxy S23 because it connects digitally in via USB-C. Why don't I use that on this Sony camera? Because um, I'd have to connect that via a wire into it and it'll it'll fall out in my bag. Something will happen and I won't have audio. And so the fact that this connects directly into the camera and is pretty solid, it doesn't fall out, means I've always got my microphone audio running into the camera. Fourth thing I like about this camera, it's got really great autofocus. They've really improved the autofocus in here. It just focuses on me all the time. And in addition to focusing on one person, it's smart enough that if a second person enters the scene, it will change the aperture and settings and focus to make sure that both people are in focus and then when that second person leaves it'll make all the settings so that the one person in there is in focus too. It's also got this neat setting called product focus and I'm gonna actually switch to this camera to show you that. So with the ZV-E1 in a normal focus setting it's gonna focus on my eye and if I hold something up to the camera it's generally not gonna focus on this thing because it's gonna keep focusing on my eye but there's a little button that you can set on the side. I have to stop recording here to set it but then when I push this little button here, that's the product showcase mode, and I turn that on, now when I hold something up in front of the camera, it will focus on that instead of on my face. And so if I've got products that I wanna show, like maybe I'm doing a live stream and I got stuff that I'm gonna hold up in front of it, then with the product showcase, like it just automatically knows, hey, focus on whatever is closest to the camera. Now, number five, I like this mode called background defocus. And so one of the things that, you know, the pros like to do with these fancy cameras is get a really blurry background. And with one button, just by pushing that button right there, you can turn on background defocus, which makes all the settings. So you get that like nice blurry professional background, not a professional, since all I did was push a button. And then if I wanna get it back to clear again, I can push that button again and it puts everything clear. Here it goes again, it makes that background blurry and you do it again and it doesn't. And it's not doing that like in software is blurring it, but it's actually doing that with the um, aperture settings in the camera. The seventh thing I like is right here. It's got a power zoom rocker on it that can control the zoom on power zoom lenses. This is a power zoom connected to the camera and then this going back and forth controls the zoom into that lens so that you don't have to always zoom it like this. Now looking out here on the beach, this is the 16 millimeter zoom and now I'm gonna go ahead and zoom it into 35 millimeters. You can see it zooms in nice and slow slowly and smoothly, which is something I can never do if I'm turning it myself. Now, in addition to being able to control the zoom with the optical zoom rocker, it has a digital clear image zoom that will actually punch it in another one and a half or two times and without losing much quality. So it's a pretty good digital zoom. Although in order to use that, you do have to change your steady shot from dynamic active to just active, because as you can see, when I go to these other modes of dynamic active versus active versus standard, those apply a general crop and are basically zooming in a little bit in and of themselves to make things more steady. What I like is it's got a tally light on it to let you know when it's recording. When that red light is on, it's recording. And when that red light is off, it's not recording. And this is really useful when you've got the camera in selfie mode and you can go ahead and see that. I also like it because I often um, hand the camera to my wife, OC Girl, to record. And it's nice because I can just look and see the red light is on. She doesn't have to tell me like action or we're on. Just by seeing the red light, I know we are good to go. Oh, and by the way, if this footage seems shaky a little bit down here, uh, it's because I'm on a, I'm on a floating 
um, dock down here underneath the pier, but I had to come under the pier uh, so I was in the shade so you could see the red tally light. You can turn it off if you don't want it, but I personally like it on. The other thing I like about this camera is it has a Bluetooth connection so you can connect your smartphone to it to control the camera from your smartphone, but I also really like the Bluetooth connection because you can connect it to the Sony Bluetooth tripod that you can start and stop recording from this tripod. You can control the zoom from here. Um, you can do the background defocus from here or whatever custom button you want to map that to. This little thing is a handle. It's also a tripod uh, and it's got a quick little easy button that you can push on this to then just turn it around. And this is what I generally use to do my like selfie recording with. And I find that this just gets it like the perfect distance away and frankly makes it easier to hold than just kind of holding it on this hand grip to do vlogging. Even if I'm doing a scene where I'm like walking with it, I find I hold it steadier if I have a nice grip underneath. Again, if you want to know the exact model number, you'll find a link in the description uh, below to find this on Amazon. It's a little over a hundred bucks for this handle. Well worth it. The nice thing I like about this camera is the placement of the SD card slot. It's right here on the side. There's only one of them and it's only an SD card, but the ZV-1, the predecessor to this camera or the, the like originator of this line, the SD card slot for that one and the battery slot were on the bottom, meaning that you couldn't change the SD card without taking it off of the tripod. Annoying. And the 10th thing I like about this camera is it just has really great image quality. It's got a really great sensor. It pr produces some really great images. You can shoot in high resolution. Chris, what resolutions? This is not a technical review. If you want to know all the resolutions and formats, there's a lot of them because it's based on the Sony a7S III, which is one of Sony's best cameras, um, all packed in here. And so you're going to get some high quality footage coming out of this little camera. Oh, and if you want to see a video that I've shot completely with that camera, um, I'll put a link at the end of this video or in the description to the vlog I did at the Birch Aquarium in San Diego, entirely shot on that camera, so you can check out the video quality for yourself. And yes, I think the video quality is even good in Intelligent Auto, which is what I keep it in. All right, but it's not all rosy. This camera's not for everybody. So what are the cons of this camera? Um, I mentioned this one earlier, but the, uh, the kit lens that comes with it, it's not that useful for vlogging. It's too narrow of a field of view, so you're gonna have to spend more money to get an additional lens for it. That'll make it wider so you can actually hold it at arm's length and talk into it, which is what the camera is designed for, really. Um, the camera is known to have overheating issues. I haven't experienced any personally shooting this here kind of in spring in Southern California. It's not too hot, um, but I think if you were heading out to Singapore or the desert or things like that, you might experience some overheating issues if you shoot on this for a long time. Really only time will tell for me if that's an issue, um, but so far doing vlogs where I shoot one, two, five, even 10 minute segments with it, I have not had any issues. Um, next con, these little um, strap holders, they're they're annoying, particularly this one right here, because this one right here is on the side where you kind of like want to grip the camera. And like you, uh, for me, it just ends up like digging into my hand a little bit as I hold it. I mean, it's not, it's not the worst thing. It kind of ends up on the top of my hand, but I just, I wish that was placed somewhere else or I wish it was removable or something like that. Connectors, I said I love the SD card. What I, what I don't love down here, the HDMI port is a micro HDMI port. So for me, I do a lot of live streaming and this will not be a replacement for my A7S III that I live stream from. That one has a dedicated HDMI connection. Also the A7S III doesn't have any overheating issues. And so if I wanna live stream for hours, no problem. Um, you would not want to use this for hours long shooting because it might overheat. Uh, and then it's kind of like, you uses these like small, annoying micro mini, I don't know, small HDMI connections. And you know, the other thing I don't love about this camera is actually the removable lens concept. The first in this line, the ZV-1, didn't have removable lens. It had a fixed lens on it. And yes, I didn't love it because it wasn't wide enough. I would have loved that lens had it just made it wider. Um, I guess they just decided, well, nobody's gonna love any single lens we put on it, so we'll make it so you can put your own lenses on it, which drives more weight, drives more cost, and it drives the fact that you then need to, um, 
let's put a, a lens cover on it. The ZV-1 had this really neat, when you turned it on, it just opened up the little lens cover on it. And when you turned it off, it closed it up. And so uh, this is just one more step to like use the camera rather than just on button and you, right? Got a lens cover, you got to turn it on. Um, minor, I I'll live with it. And then the final con, um, no viewfinder on here. So on the A7S III, there's a little viewfinder you can look through right here. Why is that useful? Because mo most people don't use them. That's why they got rid of it. That also to save space. Um, but on bright and sunny days, this screen can become washed out even if you put it on the brightest settings. And so on the brightest days, it is nice to have that little um, viewfinder to look through so you're not battling with the sun. But all these cons considered, I think this is still the best vlogging camera that's out in 2023. I think it's definitely worth the couple thousand dollars uh, price right now because it's a lot cheaper than any of the other big Sony flagship cameras. And if you're looking to get into having a great vlogging camera to take around with you, presuming you're not doing it in the world's hottest conditions, then I think you'll be really happy with the Sony ZV-E1. Now, this isn't the only camera that I use to shoot my vlogs with. I used a Samsung Galaxy S23 to record this video and a lot of my other vlogs. If you want to see my video all about tips about how to get the most out of the Samsung Galaxy S23 for recording videos like this, you'll find my link here on the screen or in the description below. And fellow explorers, as usual, I won't say goodbye because I'm going to see you in my next video.